Hey, I just wanted to walk through the download and setup for Unity because it can be kind of confusing, especially once you have to start setting your IDE up with Unity in the Unity Hub and the Unity Editor. So I just want to kind of provide an overview of that. So just at a basic level, this is the first page that comes up when you go to download Unity, like on Google, right? But um, the difference between the Unity Hub and the Unity Download is the hub is essentially where you can manage your projects. You can manage Unity downloads or different versions. You can do general account overview stuff, and you can look at these demo projects that Unity comes with. And I'll take a look at that soon. So in terms of like the plans, right, it gives you a few options for payment. Um, we're not gonna be worrying about that, at least I'm not. Um, you can if you want to, you don't really need it for this. Um, but the real difference here is you'll see student personal. Uh, student is, if you have a GitHub already and you have that set up with the student authentication, then you can authenticate GitHub into Unity and it'll sign you up for this program for free and it'll just allow you to have some extra seats on Unity collaboration so you can work on projects with other people on the same project and it gives you some version control options. It's pretty nice. I definitely recommend doing that. If you don't have GitHub set up already, we'll probably do that shortly so I wouldn't worry about it. But if you have any concerns with this process, please just let me know. It's pretty basic, um, but I don't feel the need to cover it here because I don't know if everybody has it. So regardless, if you already have the personal version downloaded, it's no big deal because it just changes it in your account. So you don't need to re-download it if you already have the personal one. So going to personal, you can download this for first time users and it'll give you kind of a guide. We don't really need to do that um, because the demo projects that it gives you are in the Unity Hub. So we're just not gonna worry about it and I can maybe come back to that if we want to. But I'm just gonna download the Unity Hub and open it up. And the main thing you'll notice, and it'll ask you for like a firewall authentication, but the main thing you'll notice is that um, it doesn't come with a version of Unity set up on it. So you'll have to download one with it, which is kind of frustrating, but um, it just kind of is what it is with the way Unity Hub works. So I'm gonna run it. And the other thing to keep in mind is um, it'll probably prompt you to update Unity Hub like once every week, same with the Unity editors. You generally don't need to. There's usually a version they have marked for long-term support because they like to update on their beta branch like every week and release it very quickly. And it's really just not necessary and, and it, it'll become tedious pretty fast. So obviously I already have a few projects, but if you go through the rest of the hub, you can see these demo projects that you can look in and see how they do it. If you just want to get an understanding of the editor, you can go to community, just get access to some website features and you can go to installs and install some new ones. So I'm just gonna show how that process works. If I go to add, uh, I have this long-term support one set up. You could use really any release. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that if you wanna do Unity collaborative with other people, you have to be on the same version. And be, if that's the case, I would probably recommend doing a long-term support one because this official release changes like every week again. So um, I'm just gonna go with this. And this is important. If you already have VS Code or some other IDE installed when you go to add modules, then you don't need to download this because it's just adding an extra gigabyte and like you don't need it because you can just set up your current IDE with Unity because Unity doesn't really have a built-in code editor. So you kind of have to use your own. Um, but again, if you don't have one, by all means use this, but I would probably go check out Vivo's uh, video on downloading VS Code because that's what we as a club are all using for the most part. So I already have it, so the rest is pretty straightforward. You'll just download it. But if I go to a project, you can also add a new project and you can see 3D or 2D, and I'll just make a new one for the sake of it. Um, the difference between 2D and 3D is pretty small in that Unity is set up for 3D. So when you make a 2D project, it's essentially just the 3D engine flattened onto a 2D editor. So um, there isn't really a fundamental difference. They work the exact same. It really just flattens you to a 2D plane. Um, but the confusing thing, at least when I was getting into Unity, was um, the, the editor is just very large. There's a lot of tools given to you. You can download a lot of plugins um, and it feels kind of hard to get into. And it's really not possible to cover everything in one video. So what I would want you guys to do is check out the editor for yourself. I'm gonna put some links in the description with some videos to check out that are more comprehensive over just a general overview of editor features. But a lot of it comes down to whatever project you're making and what that requires. So I would definitely just try to find a project and we'll get to that, but um, that'll give you a good direction for what you'll need to learn. 
So this is also kind of confusing and not very clearly laid out. So once you're in the editor, um, if I make a new script in assets, you can create a new script and that's how you code onto objects, right? That's how you program is you create a new C-sharp script and we're just gonna call this like player, right? And if I go to this, it'll open for me, but if you try to open this, it might not let you based on how your Unity preferences are set up because Unity does not have a built-in IDE, um, at least on some of the versions. Some might, some don't, but regardless, if you already have VS Code, you're gonna wanna set that up. So if you go to preferences, you can go to external tools and set this to, for external script editor, set this to Visual Studio Code or whatever. And if you don't have this option, which you probably won't, then you have to go to browse and just open up the exe file, um, wherever that is, right there. Um, and that can be used with any IDE. You could use that with Eclipse, IntelliJ, really whatever you prefer. Um, and once you have that set up, that's pretty much all there is to it in terms of just getting a start on it. Um, if I go to open the C-sharp project, I can look at the folders, go to player, and this is how every C-sharp script will look when you create it. You'll have a start method and an update method, and they're both pretty self-explanatory. This is just run once, like an initialization function, and then this just runs forever. And what's nice about this is this is very similar to the workflow for the a lot of robotics functions and um, structures. So this is a, a system that you'll be seeing a lot of updating and initialization or starting. But that's really about it for setting it up. Um, just if you want to get kind of a head start and look into the editor, you can go to, you can right click here and add objects. And I can kind of drag, if I add something to the script, um, I can add a, basically a print statement. Um, and we'll just say, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And I can actually just drag this onto the cube and it'll give it that script. So it's kind of nice. It's, it's almost visual in a way because you're kind of just dragging scripts on and off and you can add components like rigid body. This has a box collider on it. Um, and again, I would definitely recommend looking for tutorials specific to what you want to do because Unity has such a big community. Um, but if you have any questions, definitely reach out. And that's really about it. Uh, I'll again put some links in the description for some more resources to look at if you want to keep working, but yeah.